glide along on one of the few remaining sections of Ohio's once extensive canal system, a system that today, in spite of popular belief, pays into the state treasury almost as much revenue as it did in its heyday. The present income is from water furnished factories, from boat licenses, riparian leases and bridge crossings. This canal leads us into Lake St. Mary's, largest body of water totally within the borders of Ohio, and once the largest artificial body of water in the country. It is one of the finest fishing grounds to be found anywhere, due to constant stocking from the extensive St. Mary's hatcheries, which we shall now visit. Artificial stocking is important, since all lakes and streams are now leased out, making artificial stocking imperative. Due to climatic and fertility environment in Ohio, the adult fish must only remain with the nest seven days, whereas farther north, 48 days are needed. Not only are fish artificially propagated at St. Mary's, but every provision is made to aid natural reproduction. The rushes and brush make ideal spawning and furnish food. Sportsmen travel afar in search of good fishing grounds only to return to Ohio to catch their fish. It is a fisherman's paradise. Several miles of old canal have been turned into a series of small lakes that connect with the main body of water. As the years pass, this scientific planning will make St. Mary's a fishing ground equal to the best in the United States or Canada. You always catch them at St. Mary's. There is also much delightful scenery around Lake St. Mary's, and some of the cottages have developed extensive and artistically laid out estates. On the shore of Lake St. Mary's is the only lighthouse on an Ohio lake except Lake Erie. It may be only decorative, but it serves its purpose well. With this beacon to guide us, we ramble south. In the Urbana Cemetery is the grave of Simon Kenton, Ohio's redoubtable pioneer and Boone companion of Daniel Boone. His reputed marvelous leap made in escaping redskins proclaimed him as one possessing kangaroo agility. His monument was made by J.Q.A. Ward. Ward was born in this house in Urbana, Ohio, and is Ohio's greatest sculptor. He made the famous statue of Washington, which stands before the sub-treasury building in New York, marking the site where the first president took the oath of office. Ward also made many other masterpieces, several of which are in Central Park, New York. The most celebrated of these is the Indian Hunter, the replica of which now watches over the graves of himself and wife in the Urbana Cemetery. In Henry Harrison's campaign for president, this public square in Urbana, Ohio, was the scene of a big rally. The farmers came in from all the surrounding country to hear Harrison speak. Those who came from Concord Township rigged up a wagon which bore a crudely painted and illiterately spelled banner reading, the people is all correct. Harrison's opponents used this to show that his followers were ignorant backwoodsmen. The idea proved a boomerang. One follower kept a tavern on what is now the Masonic home ground at Springfield, Ohio. He placed a sign on his tavern naming it the All Correct Tavern. It was a good tavern and well patronized. Word passed along the popular national trail to stop at the inn with the strange name. One day the sign fell down and then the owner had a new one made. In the new sign, the O-L-L-K-O-R-R-E-C-T was abbreviated to O-K. The phrase came immediately into favor and was carried up and down the national trail. It has been handed down to us as a business term of approbation and was even legalized by the British Parliament. The spelling should be O period, K period, not O-K-E-Y. It is said that the Springfield, Ohio post office ships more pounds of mail than any other in the country except New York and Philadelphia. This is because several of the nation's leading publications are printed in Springfield. The well-known American, Collier's Weekly, Woman's Home Companion, Farm Home, McCall's, St. Nicholas, Billboard, and Hunter Trader and Trapper magazines are all issued in Ohio. The Buckeye State is also the home of several very large educational and religious publishing houses, and it has almost a world monopoly on the printing of playing cards. Some claim that Ohio has the most newspapers of any state. Whether this be true or not, 
we do know that the first newspaper published in the Northwest Territory was issued in Cincinnati, Ohio.